Okay, so let's go over three questions that you may find on your TSI test. This is a practice test that I created because I noticed that there weren't many examples on the official website for you guys to practice. So I made a practice test. These are three common questions. Let's go over them together. Let's take our time, really understand it. That way, when you have these type of problems on your actual test, you're prepared. If you want to purchase this test, you can just go to the description and there's the link. But let's go ahead and get started. So number 22 says, an English class is made up of 10 fifth graders and seven sixth graders. The fifth graders average 90 on the final exam and the sixth graders average 95 on the final exam. What was the average grade on the final exam for the entire class rounded to the nearest percentage? <sighs> okay, so that's a lot of information. Instead of feeling like I'm overwhelmed by this amount of information, I'm just gonna go ahead and take some notes. So we have fifth graders and we have sixth graders. So there are 10 fifth graders and there are seven sixth graders. The fifth graders, they average 90% on their test and the sixth graders average 95% on their test. And then they want us to have the average grade for the entire class. So anytime we're trying to find average, the total is on the bottom and whatever we're talking about is on the top. So say we're talking about total number of people at the mall, say there were 10 people at the mall, that would go on the bottom. And say we're saying, okay, how much money did those 10 people spend on average? We would take each amount that each person spent and add them all together on the top. So in this situation, the total amount of students are 10 plus seven, which is 17. So 17 is going to be the total because that's the total number of students that are in the class. Now, this top piece of information needs to represent 17 different scores on the test. So we need fifth graders, what they scored, and the sixth graders, what they scored. Most people, when they look at this, they're going to put 95 plus 90, and then they're going to divide it by 17, but that is not correct. The reason why 95 plus 90 is not correct is because this is just the average of one class and this is the average of the second class. But we didn't put two on the bottom for two classes. We put 17 on the bottom, meaning we wanna represent 17 different test scores. So on the top, we need to represent 17 different test scores. So we need to represent that there were 10 people that got an average of 90. So we do 90 10 times 90, plus 90, plus 90, plus 90. And I'm just gonna keep doing this and not say 90 a thousand times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we have to represent seven who got 95. So we're gonna write 95 seven times. 95, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so. All of this is gonna be added on the top divided by the total number of students, which is 17. Now, there's gotta be a better way to write this, and there is. So we can write 90 times 10 plus 95 times seven. That's the same thing as writing 90 plus 90 plus 90 10 times and 95 plus 95 plus 95 seven times. So we're gonna go ahead and write that over the number 17. So now all we have to do is add, then divide. So 90 times 10, we're going to go ahead and use our calculator. Don't be ashamed of it because you are allowed to use it. 90 times 10 is 900. And then we're going to do 95 times 7 in our calculator. And it's going to be 665 over 17. 900 plus 665 is equal to 1,565 divided by 17. And that's going to be 92.05. And they asked us rounded to the nearest percentage. So they want us to round it to the nearest whole percentage. So it would be 92%. Our answer would be A. Okay, so I know I did a lot here. 
And you may have been like, wow, Miss Amber, that was a lot of ex explanation. That was a lot to process. Yes, don't give up just because it's a lot. The reason why it was a lot is because I wanted you guys to understand why I wrote this. I really wanted you guys to see, okay, this is what it actually is saying, but this is how I'm going to write it to make it shorthand. But I didn't want to just pass by that because I didn't want you guys to get a bit lost. But when they're asking you for average, you do the total first, put the total on the bottom, and then whatever total you put on the bottom, make sure that number of things is represented on the top. So if I put 17 on the bottom, then I need to have 17 scores represented on the top. And if I put two classes on the bottom, then I have two classes averages on the top. So whatever you put on the bottom, match it to the top. Let's move on to the next question. So let me erase to make some room because I get overwhelmed when there's too many things on the piece of paper. I wonder if that's the same as you guys, but anyways. So 23 says, which of the following is not equivalent to 2x minus 10 times x plus 4? So I like to write it bigger so I have time to procrastinate. Just kidding. But anyway, not really. Okay, so what we're going to do is because they're side by side parentheses, they're binomials, meaning there's two terms in each, we're going to go ahead and we're going to multiply binomials. What that means is we take each term and we multiply it by everything in the second parentheses. And then we take the second term and multiply it by everything in the second parentheses. So let's go ahead and get started. So 2x times x, 2x times x. Now, x to the first power, x to the first power. So there's an invisible one in front of it. 2 times 1 is 2. And then x to the first power times x to the first power, you add the powers, 1 plus 1 equals x squared. So 2x squared. So I wrote that out just for you guys to see it. 2x squared, and then 2x times 4. So 2x times 4. 2 times 4 is 8. There's nothing to multiply the x again, so you just bring it down, 8x. Then we go ahead and switch over to the 10. So negative 10 times x, negative 10 times x. 10, negative 10 times 1 is negative 10. There's nothing to multiply the x by, you bring it down, minus 10x. And then negative 10 times 4 is negative 40. So now that we multiplied everything out, we're going to go ahead and see if we can combine like terms. So let's look at this first term, x squared. Is there any other x squares to combine it with? No, so we just bring it down. X, are there any other x's to combine it with? Yes, negative 10. So 8 minus 10 is negative 2x. And then is there any other number to combine negative 40 with? No, so you just bring down negative 40. So we are going ahead and we're just trying to figure out what is equivalent to that we have something that's equivalent to it. So let's see if this is any of the options. It's not. So let's go ahead and see if we take out the number two, if we're left with x squared minus x minus 20. So let's take out the number two, and then we're gonna see what we're left with. Taking out the number two means you're dividing each bit by two. So two x squared divided by two, two divided by two is one, nothing to divide the x squared by, so you're left with x squared. So you're left with x squared. You could say 1x squared, you could just say x squared. Then you do negative 2x divided by 2. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. There's nothing to divide the x by, so it's x. Again, you can write negative 1x, or you could just write negative x. So I'm just going to write negative x. And the negative 2 divided by 20 is negative 20. So a is equivalent, so that is not the answer. We're trying to figure out what is not equivalent. So A is equivalent, so that's not the answer. What about if we break it down further? Would it be X minus five, X plus four? So let's go ahead and see how we would break down this parentheses. X squared minus X minus 20. How do I break that down? First, we're gonna make two parentheses and break down the X squared. X squared can be broken down by X and X. Then, you need to find two numbers that multiply to get the last number. So multiply to get negative 20, but that add to get the middle number, which is an invisible one. So they're gonna add to equal negative one. So negative five times 
positive 4 equals negative 20, and negative 5 plus 4 is equal to negative 1. So it's negative 5 and 4. So 2 would be on the outside because that 2 is still there. We just broke down the inside, the inside, the inside. So this is also equivalent. So B is also equivalent. So it must mean that this last piece is going to be the answer. Since these two were equivalent, this must be the one that's not equivalent. Again, we can check that if we wanted to, but if you're taking a test and you don't have time to check every single answer and you're able to see that the two were equivalent, then you can assume that the last one wasn't. If you have time, I always encourage checking, but if you don't have time, then move on to the next question. All right, so now let's go ahead and go to this last question, number 24. I'm so glad that you haven't given up because these questions are important to go over. I know I'm breaking them down a lot more than necessary, but you guys just please remember that everyone is on a different level. Sometimes when I just per go fast and assume that everyone can go fast with me, some students are like, whoa, Miss Amber, you lost me. So I'm making it as simple and breaking it down as much as possible. So thank you for your patience. If you're one of the students who can go ahead and move forward, go ahead and move forward. All right, so question number 24 says, if tiling a floor costs $3.75 per square foot, how much would it cost to tile a rectangular floor that is 12 feet by six feet? All right, so I like to draw a picture. It's 12 feet by six feet. It's a rectangle. So the area of the rectangle area is equal to length times width. So if the length is 12, and the width is 6, what would be the area? All you have to do is 12 times 6, and the area would be 72 feet squared. Okay, so now that I know the area of what I'm carpeting, because when you're carpeting, you're covering the entire area of the floor, how much would it cost if it's $3.75 per square foot? So I'm going to take $3.75, times 72. So in this situation, they may give you a calculator, they may not. So let me show you both ways. So if they give you a calculator, just write 3.75 times 72, and you get $270, the answer is going to be A. But be careful just leaving the video now because they may not give you a calculator for this one, and you may have to multiply a decimal by a whole number. If you know how to do that, I'll see you in the next video. If you don't know how to do that, just stay till the very end. We'll just go over that very quickly. So what I like to do is I like to first count how many decimal places there are. One, two. So there's two decimal places. And then I like to take them out. 375, 72. And then I'm going to go ahead and multiply them out. And then at the very end, I'm going to put the decimal places back in. So five times two is 10. Carry the one. 7 times 2 is 14, plus 1 is 15. Bring down the 5, carry the 1. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. Cross off the 2, bring down the 0. 5 times 7 is 35. The 5 goes down, the 3 goes on top. 7 times 7 is 49. 49 plus 3 is 52. So you bring down the 2, bring up the 5. And then 3 times 7 is 21. 21 plus 5 is 26. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to add 0, 0, 10, 7 plus 2 plus 1 is 10. Bring carry over the 1, 6 plus 1 is 7, and bring down the 2. Okay, so now we have this number, but remember we have to put the decimal places back. How many decimal places did we take out? 2. So we have to put 2 decimal places back in. 1, 2. So the answer is going to be 270 or $270. Okay, so I hope you guys found this video to be helpful. Two things I want you guys to know. Um, one, I have this practice test. Um, it has a total of 34 questions. So if you want to purchase my practice test, um, I'll leave the link below. If you feel like you need a one-on-one -on -one session with me, I am doing tutoring. So I'll also leave the link to my um, tutoring sessions. Um, in the description so that you can just schedule a tutoring session with me. So I like to go over each one of these questions in the practice test. And then I like to go over my, my personal practice test to make sure that you guys have multiple examples of each.
So I hope this video has helped somebody study. I love to hear that you guys are passing. So once you study and then go ahead and pass your tests, please come back and let me know so because I'll be so proud to hear. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.